Hello, this is Matthew from Simply Learn, and in this video, we're going to take you through the 10 most popular tools that you'll need to have in your DevOps setup. And what we're going to do is we're going to break up the tools into eight different categories. Now we're going to go through the planning and code base tools, the building tools, the testing tools, the all important integration tool, the deployment operation, and then finally monitoring tools. Something we should also add is that all of these tools are open source. This means that you can get up and running with your DevOps environment immediately without having to worry about licensing costs. So let's jump into the very first tool, which is Git. So Git is a distributed version control tool that allows development teams to be able to share code amongst each other in a way that allows the creation of small to extremely large applications to be created effortlessly. If we look at the architecture of Git and the way that it works, that there are four key areas. We have the working directory, the staging area, local repository, and then remote repository. So your working directory is where you actually create all the files that you'll be working on in your application. Uh, the staging is the area that you get ready to commit those files to your local repository for version control. And once you actually have then put them into your local repository, then you want to be able to push those files using a push command out to a remote repository such as GitHub or GitLab. In addition, if you have a distributed team, you can then also then pull down the latest files. So as a team, you can always be working on all the files all the time and then go through the whole process again by working on your local files. You can do this whole process really quickly and easily. Git is actually a free tool that you can download and run through command line off your computer. Finally, you want to be able to merge files that you may be working on, say, for instance, a different branch, which is a new feature. And you want to be able to merge those files back into the master directory, the uh, master branch that's running on Git itself. So some of the things to uh, point out with Git, what makes it really useful is that it's absolutely brilliant at being able to track uh, changes in your source code. This is something that source code tools uh, really kind of should be able to do, but Git is exceptionally good at this. Having large teams uh, working at different phases within the project and working on different branches within the project is really easy to do. And the collaboration tools within Git make it so that your teams can work effortlessly with each other. Uh, inherently, you are creating backups of all your code which is fantastic. And probably the most important part is that the environment itself is a non-linear environment. This means that you don't have to work through specific gates to be able to reach feature to actually get a feature ready for delivery. You can actually work in a non-linear fashion. So who's using Git? Well, as you can imagine, all of the big technology companies are using Git, including Netflix, Lyft, and Intel, plus many, many other companies. So let's get on to our next tool, which is Maven. And the focus on Maven is to automate the build process of code that's being checked into a repository such as a git repository so if we have a look at the architecture here maven itself actually executes uh, what are called pom files and those pom files actually then look for specific dependencies that will then go against a repository to be able to build out the project you can actually extend the pom files with plugins and you can actually then create a specific build profile for your environments which is actually fantastic because you can really fine tune the uh, profile and again all of this is scripted and this is something that is common with all the tools that you'll be using in a true DevOps environment is that you can script all of them which means that you can automate the processes that are in your DevOps environment and really accelerate the ability to be able to build consistent high quality software. Final step for a Maven environment is to actually build all the software into a um, in our build server. So a couple of things that are important to notice with Maven one of the things that you'll see that's key with all of the tools that we have here really easy to use. Uh, Maven itself it's got a pretty simple setup. It's highly available, which means that your teams uh, can rely on the solution being ready for your environment and you can actually get to it and use it very easily and consistently. You can have multiple builds happening at the same time, which is really important, particularly if you have branched software and you want to be able to test the branches. And the other thing as well is that it's open source, so you have instant access to new features without any additional configuration. So it really helps your teams to get the new code and implement new features within the environment itself so you're always working on the latest and greatest as you can imagine DevOps shops such as Zillow and Zend and JP Morgan and Chase are already using Maven and you'll see that many 
DevOps shops are also using Maven for their build software. Testing with Selenium is very important and being able to automate that environment is critical so you can actually guarantee that your code will work. And Selenium itself is designed for testing and automating web applications. It's really good in that environment. If we look at the architecture, the way that it works is that you actually have a client library that goes against the code you're writing, whether that's C Sharp, Python, Java, JavaScript. And then there are specific drivers that go against the web browsers to actually test out the code that you have created so that you can actually see whether it works in the appropriate web browsers. And all of the popular web browsers are supported with Selenium. Selenium is an open source solution. It does allow you to write scripts in multiple different languages, which is a real big bonus. You can as well run parallel test execution. So this balances very well with Maven. And as with other tools that we have, it's really easy to use. And Selenium is being used by Google, HubSpot, and Salesforce, as well as many other companies. So let's talk about the really important part, which is integrating all of this. And Jenkins really is the de facto tool in this space. And so the role of Jenkins is to be able to manage and allow for that continuous integration that you need to make DevOps successful. So allowing the dev, the development team, to integrate effectively with the ops, the operations team, and do that through testing and management of the code that has been created. So if we look at the architecture here, we have our remote source code repository is going to be waiting for a Jenkins pull to be able to create a commit. And then that Jenkins um, serve master will then push out and distribute the work to multiple slaves so that you can actually have the actual code being pushed around your environment. So Jenkins is really easy to use. It's very mature. It's been around for many years. There are a significant number of plugins that allow for the Jenkins environment to be scaled very effectively. And it is portable across multiple platforms. In fact, most of the leading operating systems will support Jenkins. And as you can imagine, Jenkins is being used by companies such as LinkedIn and Microsoft, eBay, Dell, and Cloudera. So let's talk about the other side of DevOps and talk about some of the operations tool. And we'll start off with Docker. So the role of Docker is to make it easy for people to be able to simulate full environments quickly and easily on their desktop for building and testing, but at the same time, make that real easy to be able to port those environments across multiple um, areas. So let's, let me talk a little bit about how that would work. Uh, so with the Docker engine, uh, you have a Docker client locally that allows you to emulate the whole Docker environment without having to have the overhead that you would typically have if you're doing virtualization or dedicated servers running specific dedicated operating systems. Because you are scripting the entire environment, Docker is a very scalable and repeatable environment for being able to take across your entire cloud network. So some of the features that are really uh, important for Docker, it's incredibly portable across multiple platforms. Uh, the Docker team have done a fantastic job on portability. It does run in isolation. So what this means is that you can actually have multiple Docker environments running on a server concurrently, and they will not interrupt each other. They actually fully isolated sandbox environments. So the other part to Docker is because it is stripped off needless operating system and, and host environment APIs and services, the actual startup and boot time for Docker is really very fast, which in turn makes this very scalable and efficient to run. And you can actually reuse volumes very easily. So who's using Docker? Just about everybody. Spotify, Uber, PayPal, BBC. Really, Docker is used by a lot of people. Just a side note, probably something that would uh, complement Docker very well is uh, Kubernetes and Kubernetes is becoming a very popular alternative to Docker and so you know really get to know both of those tools. So let's talk about uh, some of the operation and management tools that you have for your environment and the, the three big ones here are Chef, Ansible and Puppet and we'll start with Ansible and Ansible is a configuration software package and unlike the other two products here um, unlike Chef and Puppet Ansible doesn't actually require a client to run on the host server where you're pushing out a configuration. You can actually have a defined operation configuration, so like a, a web server configuration or a database configuration or an IoT cloud configuration. You can actually have that running um, effectively from a script that 
is written on a client machine and then on your local machine and then you can push that script that you've created out to your remote um, servers and have everything uh, work um, as you'd expect uh, quickly on your remote servers you know just some of the key features of Ansible it's incredibly lightweight one of the things that's really important with Ansible is that it's actually uh, very easy, easy to use there is unlike the other two tools we'll be covering unlike um, Puppet and Chef uh, Ansible actually has a full GUI uh, that you can use to actually interact and build out solutions so there is a, a visual interface that you can actually go in so you're not just working completely in command line companies that are using Ansible include uh, Twitter EA Sports Cisco and NASA as well as Verizon so complementing Ansible but uh, probably a little bit more popular right now are Chef and Puppet and we'll cover Chef first now both Chef and Puppet are somewhat similar in configuration and both of them rely on having a client server relationship with their architecture the way that Chef works is that Chef actually creates recipes and the, each recipe is a server configuration uh, setup and what you actually do is you create individual recipes and then for your entire network you create what's called a cookbook and that cookbook actually can be used to control the setup of your entire network um, and this works really well for being able to create consistent and highly scalable environments the things that are great with chef is that it's actually a very flexible configuration and you can actually do an awful lot with it it has really good security features which are, are very appealing to particularly if you have a DevSecOps environment where the security team are integrated with your DevOps environment and that's something that's becoming more and more popular. Chef itself is actually pretty easy to use. I mean, it is a command line tool but it is actually fairly easy to use and the actual scripting of the recipes is something that you can do even if you don't have much scripting experience. It's something there are so many recipes out um, and available you can actually use many of the templates that have already been written and just either copy them or modify them to your environment. As you'd expect a lot of the companies uh, using Chef are the big technology companies such as Facebook and IBM. Microsoft in particular has really invested heavily and chef that you'll find that uh, chef is probably the most popular management tool used within the Azure environment so a complementary uh, product to chef is puppet and if we look at puppets um, as you can imagine it's again another open source configuration tool the structure as you can see is actually very similar in concept to uh, chef in which you have a local server that actually has all the configuration environments the templates and the files and the manifests and it will actually then communicate communicate with all of your entire environments such as and in, uh, with Puppet they refer to them as nodes and uh, within your node you have multiple servers but it's similar in concept to Chef in many ways and that it's just another way of being able to control your environment both are really great tools in fact really all three of them Ansible, Chef and Puppet are great tools what you have to do as a DevOps team is really just decide which tool is the one that's appropriate for your environment so some of the things that are great with Puppet it's a multi platform compatible it's very scalable and it allows you to push out changes to your environment really really fast and who are using Puppet you know, you've got Red Hat HP Google leading DevOps teams are using Puppet today so let's get into the two tools that we have that actually monitor our operations environment Splunk and Nagos so uh, Splunk is as you expect is a monitoring tool and its goal is for actually monitoring the operations operations of all the environments that you have make sure that they're working correctly and it does this by going through and uh, reviewing your entire environment and uh, writing the operational information to disk and then searching that environment to make sure everything works correctly it does a lot of analysis in real time it is a very easy to uh, set up and use tool for testing for analysis and to then be able to then troubleshoot any failures that may come up the thing that's great about Splunk is that you can actually um, put it in a distributed environment so that's no single point of failure which makes it itself inherently very very scalable so Cisco Facebook Domino's Pizza Dubai airports are all customers that are using Splunk today in their DevOps environments so finally let's uh, jump into our final monitoring tool which is uh, Negios and very similar to Splunk is uh, Negios and uh, probably the big difference
different is it a client server setup but uh, really again it's all about being able to monitor and check the status of your entire environment and your network and your servers in real time and give you the appropriate visualizations whether it's on your laptop or whether it's an alert that's sent out to your phone and you know so you're aware in real time how your network is performing and can then check and adjust to uh, actually making changes and the, the bottom line in this uh, kind of architecture with uh, Splunk and Negos is that it allows you as the operations lead to be able to be ahead of any perceived impact so say for instance you are putting in specific check marks for your environment you can actually have alerts being sent out to your team when certain thresholds are met and so that means that you are aware of problems with your environment before your customer is there's nothing worse than uh, somebody emailing and saying hey your website doesn't work or like a page is down or it's slow or something like this with uh, Nagios and Splunk these are tools that really address those kind of problems so that you stay ahead of the curve. So some of the things that are really good with Negos is it, Negos itself is very, very comprehensive. You can do an awful lot with it and it allows you to be able to get to the root of monitoring and analyzing your problems within your operations and network environment very quickly. It has a very modular architecture, which uh, also then makes it um, extremely highly available um, because the, the system itself is not reliant on just a single large application actually uh, the module architecture allows it to be scalable and very easy to uh, manage across the entire environment. Companies using Negios include Uber and Hike and Webedia. Again, these are all technology companies but there's no reason why you shouldn't be using them as well. So hopefully you've enjoyed our uh, 10 tools that you need within your DevOps environment to help cover both the dev, the ops and the integration between dev and ops. We also snuck in a couple of extra bonuses in there as well as uh, talking a little bit about DevSecOps, which is really the evolution of DevOps. If you have any additional tools you think that we missed that we should have had in this list, please put those in the comments below. And again, as always, if you have any questions, put your questions below in the comments and we'll get back to you with answers from our Simply Learn team. This has been Matthew, uh, giving you a quick overview of the top 10 tools in DevOps. Have a brilliant day. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.